It's week four of the NFL season, and we give you our three best bets for this Sunday, and it all starts right now. Hey guys, it's Matt from GrandSandBetters.com. The NFL landscape is starting to take shape after week three. We have three more of our best bets for this week, but first, if you're new to GrandSandBetters, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, make sure you don't miss any of our free picks, free predictions, all NFL season long. While you're at it, smash that like button if you are finally ready for some Sunday football. It's been a long week, but it is finally here and we get to watch another fun-filled afternoon of NFL football. So, without further ado, let's dive in to our best bets of week number four in the NFL. And the first game we're going to look at is between the Tennessee Titans and the New York Jets. This game is at 1 p.m. Eastern. The Titans, they're favored by 6.5 points in this one. The over-under is also set at 44.5. Titans come into this game 2-1 and one on the season, and their offense got ripped by the media after a week one loss to the Cardinals, but it looks like they're on the right track after getting a win in Seattle and at home against the Colts. On paper, the next two weeks, they get to play the Jets and the Jags. Bunch of cupcakes in our opinion, but that's why we play the games and we'll see if they can continue their recent success. Now, Ryan Tannehill has had a very mediocre start to the season, throwing for about 750 yards and four touchdowns, but he's also thrown three interceptions, including two last week against the Colts. With the big addition of Julio Jones in the offseason, hopes were high for a dynamic and vertical passing game. However, with the exception of the game versus the Seahawks, where Julio did have six catches for 128, the Titans have really utilize the entire arsenal of weapons at receiver. In each game this season, Tannehill has completed a pass to eight different receivers, and even in the last game, he targeted 11. This is going to be more in the same this game. A.J. Brown is nicked up. Julio Jones is a little nicked up, so expect sprinkling of the football to many different receivers throughout this game. Now, Tannehill is going to face a very surprising Jets secondary. That's top 10 in yards given up through the air this far this season. Uh, but let's take that with a little bit of a grain of salt there. The Jets secondary faced the following quarterbacks. Sam Darnold, who they're very familiar with, rookie Matt Jones, and journeyman Teddy Bridgewater. So let's not overreact to the early success of the Jets. Remember, last year they did finish 28 in passing yards given up. Now this team only goes as far as Derrick Henry takes them, though. After a dismal performance in week one where the Cardinals bottled him up for 58 yards on 17 attempts, he has righted the ship and come back uh, with back-to-back 100-yard -back rushing games, including a massive 35 rush uh, for 182-yard, three-touchdown performance against the Seahawks in Seattle. He's going to be going up a very middle-of-the-road road defense here, uh, a road rush defense again with the Jets, and we expect him to eclipse probably 100 yards again very easily as the Jets are giving up 110 yards on the ground per game. Now, with the Titans having seemed to forget about week one loss and averaging 30 points a game in the last two weeks, we can easily see the Titans putting up four or five touchdowns against this very bad Jets football team. Speaking of those Jets, though, many people had high hopes that Zach Wilson would be the savior of New York. But three games in, that hope may already be gone. In his first game against the Jets' former QB, he actually performed pretty decent. He threw for 258 yards, two touchdowns, and only one INT, although he nearly had 50% uh, percent completion rate. But things went from good to bad to worst real fast. He threw four INTs against his rookie counterpart, Matt Jones, in a 25-6 loss to New England and threw for two more INTs against Teddy Bridgewater and the Broncos. His completion rate is awful. He has thrown less yards each game, and he's thrown seven total INTs. And the Jets haven't been in the end zone since week one. Don't even get us started on their rushing game. They're averaging 80 yards on the ground, and they have no running back who's ever eclipsed over 59 yards in a game this season. Meanwhile, the Titans' rush defense this season has been very good, only allowing 100 yards on the ground and giving up four rushing TDs all season long. So, what's the good news? Well, 
The lack of being able to establish the run, Zach Wilson's going to have to throw the ball nearly probably 40 times in this matchup. In this game, the Titans secondary, they're ranked in the bottom half of the league, giving up 259 yards per game through the air, and they gave up 320 the last time they went on the road. Now, don't get us wrong. We're not saying Zach Wilson's going to go for 300-plus yards in this game, but the Jets should be able to move the football a little and finally find the end zone. This is going to be an interesting game. Most, uh, if not everyone, probably going to throw money on the Titans to cover that 6.5 spread. But if we didn't learn anything from Thursday Night Football where the Jags covered easily against the Bengals, we should for this game because it's possible Zach Wilson and company puts it all together. He's gone up against the best defense of the league. Bill Belichick had to play in my, uh, Mile High Stadium, or he went up against the best uh, defense in the league with the Panthers. He played against Bill Belichick, and he had to play in Mile High Stadium. So he has had some tough situations here. At home this week, we think against a medi mediocre secondary, he'll be able to actually move the ball. we like this to be a much more high-scoring affair than you would think it would be. So our first bet of week number four is the New York Jets and the Tennessee Titans over 44 and a half. Now the second game we're going to look at is the Dallas Cowboys versus the Carolina Panthers. Also 1 p.m. Eastern time slot. Cowboys favored by four points and the over under is set at 51.5. Cowboys coming in this game two and one and honestly they could be three and zero in this uh, early season if it wasn't for that very questionable pass interference call in week one against the Bucks. But be that as it may, they looked very good against a bad Eagles team on Monday night. They won the game, and they should win the game. And their defense so far has looked much better than last year, holding the Chargers and the Eagles to both under 21 points or less the last two weeks. Now, Dak Prescott starting to return to that person he was prior to his injury last year. He's thrown for 875 yards, six touchdowns, two INTs already on the season, and he's found two, yes, two. Two reliable receivers and favorite receivers to throw to, C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper, who have caught a combined 47 catches for 450 yards and three touchdowns on the season. Now, the rush game has not gotten off the ground, no pun intended, as expected with Elliott in the backfield through three games. Elliott still hasn't been able to eclipse that 100-yard rushing mark. However, he still has found the end zone three times, and he's been a nice check-down receiver in the last few weeks. Uh, through the air. It'll be a huge test though this week as the Cowboys go up against one of the best defenses in the league uh, in total yards, rush defense, pass defense, scoring defense. Carolina has putting everything together but right now the Panthers only giving up 191 yards per game to opponents and 10 points per game. Ugh, it could be rough for Dak. However, the Panthers coming in at 3-0. It looks like at the moment, Sam Darnold was not the problem in New York. Uh, but let's not overreact again. It's not overreaction uh, week number four here. Let's not overreact uh, because they have been very good on the de defensive side of the ball and haven't played that many great opponents. Two out of three wins came against awful opponents. Uh, they beat a really bad Jets team in a revenge spot for Darnold against his old, uh, his own replacement there. And they beat a Texans on Thursday night football team, uh, or for Thursday night football game with Davis Mills playing at quarterback. Cowboys offense, they're going to be on a different tier than everybody else that they've played so far. So their defense, uh, we'll have to see how they hold up. I know they're number one in the league right now, but could be a different story come Monday morning. Sam Darnold, though, has played great so far this season. Very well at managing the game and not making those critical mistakes. He's thrown for 700 yards on the season with three touchdowns and only one interception. But with the injury coming to Christian McCaffrey last week against the Titans and Chubba Hubbard having to fill the backup spot there, it should be interesting and an exciting opportunity to see if they let Sam Darnold loose or let him still have to play conservatively. Chubba Hubbard rushed for 52 yards and had three catches for 27 yards after replacing CMC, but will be facing a much improved Cowboys defensive front, one that's limiting teams to 70 yards on the ground, including Jalen Hurts to only 35 rushing yards on the Monday Night Football game. The secondary, which is not improved for Dallas, maybe it's actually probably gotten worse, uh, gives up the second most passing yards per game through the first three weeks, 
331, but it's a bend not break defense and it's working well for them. The Cowboys are actually leading the league. They're first in average in takeaways per game at 2.7. So the bend not break is working and they're keeping teams to low enough points to get Dak an opportunity to win games. Sam Darnold, most likely, he's going to have to throw the ball, give the Panthers a chance to win this game. But can you trust Darnold without the likes of CMC as a threat against the defense? We look for the Cowboys to continue having great success offensively. And without the most dynamic weapon on the field for the Panthers, we think Sam Darnold and company are finally in for a game that might be bigger than they can handle. So our second pick of NFL week number four is the Dallas Cowboys minus four over the Carolina Panthers. And our final pick, week number four, we're going to look at that awesome Sunday night football matchup between Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Bill Belichick with his rookie quarterback, Matt Jones and the New England Patriots. Over-under set at 49.5 and, and the spread is minus seven to the Bucs. Patriots, one and two coming into this game. Their only win coming in week two against those awful Jets. They've given up 51 points this season. That's best in the NFL. But the Bucks' offense is a whole other story compared to the Dolphins, Jets, and Saints. Their secondary ranks second in the league, which will be a good test against a very pass-heavy Bucks offense. But Brady's not stupid. When he sees a team's weakness, he's going to exploit it. And their run defense is giving up 122 rush yards per game, which is ninth worst in the league. We are sure Brady will be fine with handing the ball off to Fournette or Bernard until the Patriots make the right adjustments. And then at that point, he's going to most likely start shredding the secondary. So it's imperative that the Patriots win the battle in the trenches defensively early to keep the game close. Now, offensively, the Patriots passed on Cam Newton and decided to go with that rookie quarterback, Matt Jones. He's thrown for 737 yards, two touchdowns, and three INTs, which is kind of all right for a rookie. Jacoby Myers has been his favorite target so far. He has hauled in 19 receptions on 29 targets and leads the team in receiving yards. Free agent signings, Nelson Aguilar and Hunter Henry, both have over 100 yards receiving as well. So they have the pieces around Matt Jones and the defense to put together a solid team, but it really all relies on Matt Jones' play. The Bucs, on the other hand, do not have to worry about who's playing quarterback for them. Brady looked phenomenal in his 22nd season, already throwing for over 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. As we mentioned already, it's a very pass-heavy team. And honestly, why would you not be when you have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Gronk, and Antonio Brown to throw to? They are second to last in the NFL, however, in rush yards per game with 56 a game. But it's not because of the lack of skill at running back or a weak offensive line. They just really don't run the ball. They will most likely right, run a little bit here given how good New England's secondary is and how poor their run defense has been. But Brady is definitely going to not be, he's not going to be scared to throw it at Foxborough for sure. Defensively though, the Bucs are almost the exact opposite as the Patriots. Their run defense ranks fourth in the league while their pass defense ranks dead last. Mac Jones is going to have to throw the ball a lot in this game, which leaves the door wide open for some more rookie mistakes. The Bucs most likely going to dial up blitz packages and put a lot of pressure on Jones, so, uh, on Jones so he won't be able to be comfortable in that pocket and force them to run it more against that great Bucks front seven. Now, it's a very anticipated game this season. Brady returning finally to Foxborough for the first time since leaving New England. And although it probably won't be a close game, the NFL knew what they were doing putting this on Sunday Night Football to jack up the viewership. Last season in games, uh, in the four games after the Bucks lost, they won the next game by an average of 16 points. After a tough loss last week against LA, the Bucs are going to look to bounce back here. And in this one, Brady's not going to take his foot off the gas if he has the opportunity to keep scoring and scoring and scoring against his former team. So our last bet for week number four in the NFL is Tampa Bay Buccaneers minus seven over the Patriots. That's it, guys, for us here at Grand Sand Betters. We're going to be live streaming, remember, the Browns-Vikings game at 1 p.m. We'll also be uh, looking in on the Red Zone channel and keeping everybody up to date. But we'll do play-by-play -play of the Browns game and the Minnesota Vikings game at 1 p.m. this Sunday. Make sure you come check us out, hang out with us, do some live betting, and uh, it'll be a good time all around. But uh, as always, sit back, 
relax, enjoy NFL Week 4, and we'll see you next week.